Hi, this is Mato. Welcome to my online chess lecture. In this video I will show you a game between Karl Schlechter and Aldrich Juras. This game was played in San Sebastian in 1911. Schlechter had white pieces and he started with e4. Juras played e5. Knight to f3. Knight to c6. Knight to c3. Knight to f6. Bishop to b5. The Spanish game. Bishop to b4. The double Spanish. And both players cast at the king's side. d3, d6. Is that symmetrical or is that symmetrical? Bishop to g5. Black to move. Bishop to g4 was expected. Just kidding. No, I'm not. Juras played knight to e7, allowing white to take the knight and double the pawns. Knight to h4, let's take it back. Bishop takes on f6, doesn't give white a huge advantage. The main line goes like this. G takes on f6, knight to h4, c6. Bishop to c4, knight to g6. And believe it or not, from this position, black won more games than white. But we can't go deeper here, back to our game. Knight to h4 was played. c6 not only attacking the bishop but controlling d5 square, preventing white from playing knight to d5. Bishop to c4, black to move. Bishop to g4 and d5 are nowadays considered to be the best moves for black. Juras played knight to e8, intending to meet f4 with his own trick. It is way to move. And this is a very important moment of the game. Schlechter played f4. Nobody else played this move after this game in this position, except Capablanca in a simul against a weaker player. So, what is wrong with this move? Black can win a piece now. And Juras did. This is the first move. Bishop takes on c3 b takes on c3 and now d5 so black can play f6 bishop to b3 let's take it back e bishop takes on e7 queen takes on e7 and black wins bishop to b3 f6 trapping the bishop f takes on e5 f takes on g5 rook takes rook check king takes rook Queen to f3, king to g8, rook to f1, knight to c7, queen to f7, check, king to h8. It is now clear that white has a compensation for the sacrifice material. However, if black activates all of his pieces, he may even win. The game continued. e takes on d5, c takes on d5. What happens if knight from e takes on d5? Then white wins just like this. Checkmate. Back to our game. c takes on d5, queen to f8, check. Queen takes queen, rook takes queen, check. Knight to g8. Knight to f3, black to move. Bishop to e6 was played. Black is a piece up and naturally wants to trade pieces. However, bishop to d7 would be a better move. You will see shortly why. Bishop to e6, rook takes rook, knight takes rook, knight takes on g5, attacking the bishop. Knight to c7, moving the bishop to a safe spot now doesn't work because of knight to f7 check mate. Back to our game. Knight to c7, knight takes bishop, knight takes knight, Bishop takes on d5. The dust has settled and white has three pawns for the sacrificed piece. And we know that the value of the pawns increases in the endgame. The knight is under attack, knight to d8. d4, very strong center. Knight to e7 attacking the bishop, bishop to b3. Knight from e to c6, white to move. King to f2, naturally in the endgame Schlechter wants to centralize his king. Knight to a5 threatening knight takes bishop, maybe. How would you continue? How would you continue? 
How would you continue? That bird was annoying. Schlechta played d6. Black to move, knight from a to c6. If knight takes on b3, what happens then? How do you recapture? This is what Schlechta had in mind. e7, and the pawn promotes back to our game. So the knight had to go back, knight from a to c6. d5, knight to e7, d6, knight from d to c6. What else? If knight takes on e6, d takes on e7, knight to c7, bishop to f7, and white wins back to our game. Knight on d to c6, d takes on e7, knight takes pawn, king to f3, king to g8, king to e4, king to f8, king to e5, king to e8, bishop to d5, b6, bishop to e4 attacking the pawn and taking the squares away from the knight. h6, king to d6, king to d8, bishop to d3, and very soon black will run out of moves. h5, h4, b5, a desperate pawn sacrifice to deflect the bishop and have some counterplay. Bishop takes on b5, but this allows knight to f5 check, king to e5. Knight takes on h4, threatening knight takes on g2. Maybe. White to move. White played a move and black resigned. What would you do? Karl Schlechter played bishop to d3 and Juras resigned. If knight takes on g2, king to d6, threatening e7. If knight to f4, e7 check, king to e8, bishop to b5 check and white wins, and let's go back. If in this position, black plays a better move, king to e7, then how would you continue? Then bishop to e4, trapping the knight. After g6, g3, knight to f5, bishop takes on f5, pawn takes bishop, king takes on f5, a6, what else? c4, a5, a4, king to e8, allowing white to play king to f6 and after king to d8, king to f7 and we can stop here. This was a masterpiece by Karl Schlechter, wasn't it? What do you think of this game? And that is all. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video. I wish you good luck with your chess and bye for now.